Good morning, Legacy Church. It's very exciting to hear the buzz, to hear all the conversation. Um, you know, church is a lot of things, and God built us. He made us to need and crave relationships, so it's so encouraging to hear that uh, from you all this morning. As we begin our service today, we're going to start with a video on the screen. Let's stand together and worship this morning with a heart of gratitude. Cheers. 
Man, I'm so thankful for his grace today. I'm so grateful and um, a heart of gratitude for the grace that he's given. Let's pray this morning. God, we thank you. Give us hearts full of gratitude for all that you've done for us. God, help us to see all the good that is going on in our lives and view it as gifts from you. God, everything that's happening, let us be thankful, whether it feels like a gift or not. God, let us live in a heart of gratitude. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We ask you to open up the heavens this morning. Pour out your love and show us your glory. We waited for this day. We gathered in your name, calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire will burn our hearts with you. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our prayer. Glory on our face, we're looking to the skies. Descending like a cloud, you're standing with us now. Lord, unveil our eyes. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see.
Show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. You may be seated. So this weekend, um, first of all, welcome to Legacy Church. I'm Tammy, and I'm so glad to worship with you this morning. Um, this weekend, we have had a youth um, upended event, and if there's ever been a world, a time in our world that's been upended, um, we're in it. I could have said that last Sunday. I could have said that a year ago or five years ago. could say it next week, too, probably. But we live in an upended kind of world. And for sure, thank you, worship team, for that reminder. For sure, he wants to show up and bring um, constants in our life and his presence into our world. And we get to be that in, in this crazy world, right? Right, church? We get to be that. So these um, incredible students over here and scattered throughout the room as well, we've, we've gotten to spend the weekend together. And I did say we've gotten to. We didn't have to, but we got to spend the weekend together. And we're sporting those, those cool shirts upended. So church, if you wouldn't mind, just check in with these students before, um, before we leave today. Um, camp does not end until this evening. Parents will pick up their kids at 7.30 tonight, but it's been an incredible time together. And um, I want to not just welcome you to the church, but I want to thank you, church, for all your support, your prayerful support last Sunday. Many of you took the prayer cards and you've been praying for, I know you've been praying for me, you've been praying for each one of the leaders and the campers. Um, this weekend, and thank you, and we've been praying for our speakers, Eric and Randy Lynn Johnson, all the way from Colorado. It's been a great bonus, and we get to hear from them today. So we are a praying church, not just in this building, but we're a praying church, right? And um, thank you for that. That's one way we support. Another way we get to support Legacy Church is through our finances and your faithful giving. All of, all of that together makes ministry more more apt to happen in, um, without stress, to be honest with you, um, that we can just see a need and meet a need, pour into other people the gospel. So thank you, church, for that. Um, this is a great time to talk about this, which hear, hearing songs about gratitude. And on July 24th, we will be praying um, over backpacks that our students from this church um, and maybe other students who have been a part of Praise Rocks, been a part of Teach One to Lead One, been a part of maybe your community that you know, and everybody brings their backpacks, and we're gonna we're gonna pray over those backpacks. Our Vision Forward team here at Legacy has been praying about and promoting this event. So mark your calendars, if you would, parents and kids, that Sunday, July twenty fourth. Um, we will pray over our backpacks. But in the meantime, every Sunday, if you would bring items that could go in backpacks, maybe not just our campers or our students here, but those in our community who don't have the funds to make those happen. So there will be a tub out in um, the lobby every Sunday between now and then. And if you would bring in you know, crayons and markers and rulers and Kleenexes and anything that your kid um, might use or that you suspect, you know, an encouraging note would be a great one, too, to put into um, that tub, okay? Isn't that a cool idea? Um, just to make a difference in our community and in our church. Um, the next one I want to share with you is, um, I'm really targeting this group, um, I want to put a challenge out to you. So last Wednesday night, we met for youth, food, fun, and fellowship that Troy Castle, who is our um, interim summer youth person, and he's rocking it already, and yeah, yep, That's, that was time for, there we go, and so we're meeting this Wednesday night, okay, I know we've had camp all weekend, but we just, we, we want to keep this ball rolling, so we'll meet on Wednesday night, but the challenge is, who could you invite to bring with you, right, so we had 28 maybe, or 26 last Wednesday night, so what if we like doubled that amount? 
right? So parents, if we could do whatever we can to come alongside our youth and help make that happen would be tremendous. We'll bring the food, right? Food, fun, and fellowship. We will bring the food, yeah. So church, let's continue to pray, and um, we will continue to worship. God, I pray for um, all that we've talked about, all that we've sung, all the words that have been spoken today, that you would be the one gets the glory. <laughs> We are indeed grateful as we continue to worship. May your name be lifted high. In Jesus' name, amen. fifth graders and younger, would you join me in the lobby for church? Awesome, awesome.
glasses on now. Yes? Can you hear me? Through the microphone? We're in action. Um, like Pastor Tammy said, I know, I like it. It makes me feel kind of real. Um, my name is Randy Lynn Johnson, and my husband Eric and our three kids are in from Colorado Springs, and we've had the incredible privilege to be speaking at the youth camp this weekend. Um, if you didn't already know it, I want you to know that's an incredible group of young people over here. Every once in a while you get around young people and you can tell, like, this is a group that's going to change the world. And so just passionate to be encouraging them and speaking identity and truth over them and that they're going to take to their schools and beyond. And it's just, it's been a lot, a lot of fun. Um, so a little bit about YWAM, if you don't know, and just sort of an update, because we have been um, sent from this church 11 years ago. We've been a part of YWAM. And YWAM is an international, interdenominational missions movement that focuses on knowing God and making God known. And we train students, we call young people in, we equip them with everything that they need to be disciples of Christ, and then we send them overseas as missionaries. And it can last anywhere from six months to 11 years. The founders are in their 80s, they've been going at it 60 plus years, you know, so we're just all about seeing God's kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Um, our campus focuses in the 1040 window, so North Africa, Middle East, most of Asia. I work in our training department, and Eric is our new managing director, or like the COO, if you will. So, um, yeah, very exciting. You clap for that. I'm super proud of this guy. We train around 200 students a year and sustain about 100 missionaries in the field at any given time. Um, and we're happy to say we're back and better than ever after COVID. That was an interesting few years, as you all know. Um, but we're really, really excited. We feel like we have a word of the Lord to, to get five new campuses from our campus going, focused on the least reached peoples. Um, so right now we have commitments and boots on the ground in three of the five. One in Portugal, reading, reaching the Middle East. Um, one in the Mediterranean, reaching refugees in the Middle East. And then we have another one, I can't tell you the specifics, um, but it is in the Middle East and super, super exciting. This country is opening up in never before seen ways. I wish I could tell you the name, ask me later and I'll whisper it to you, but um, super, super exciting things. Um, we have a goal to double our student numbers in the next two years and it's happening. And so basically we just wanna be a part of what God is already doing in the nation. So you'll never hear it on the news, but the two fastest growing churches are in Iran and Afghanistan places that seem hard and are hard, um, but God is on the move, and he will not be stopped. His spirit will not be stopped, so amen. Um, and so it was actually really perfect when Pastor Nate and Tammy asked us to share this morning, and I said, the sermon's on gratitude. We're in a summer series, and I was like, well, that just feels too perfect because I'm overflowing with gratitude to this body of believers. Um, so in addition to being missionaries, I grew up here. I look around and I have memories all over from when I was my niece's age and before. Like, it's just been so fun. And people who have poured into my life. And um, there's a saying, how does a turtle get on a fence post? Not by itself. It has to be put there, right? And so I am um, I'm a product of the years of faithfulness and investments um, that so many of you have made and now my family is a part of and uh, man I was hoping not to get emotional, but I can't not um, And for you guys just to know every dessert from the dessert auction every car wash Every yard sale every yes that you give not only to these youth, but to this body It makes a difference and it makes a difference not only in their lives But impacting the nations and so the work that my family does in the nations is a direct part of your inheritance. So, well done. Give yourselves a round of applause. So, gratitude. My prayer for you all this morning is that we shift beyond just an attitude of gratitude, right? And it becomes a lifestyle for us. And so I have four points that I wanna make. Um, and as we answer the question, why should we express gratitude? Number one, it's a form of worship. 
Um, one of the things, the very first things that the Lord told Moses to tell the Israelites when they had come out of Egypt, brand new nation, didn't know how to function. He had to teach them how to do government, how to do health care, how to do politics, how to live your life. One of the first things the Lord said in Deuteronomy 8.10, says, when you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Right? And this is something we do as parents. We're instilling in our kids, like somebody, we give them their food, or we, someone gives them a gift. We're like, what do we say? Thank you. I told the youth, I'm what you call a holler back preacher. I really like it. If you are feeling blessed or you agree with something, you just feel free. You just say, amen. amen. Come on. Amen. Let's go. I'm, a, I'm about it. I'm a, I get a little, like, Southern Baptist. I wasn't raised Southern Baptist, but I get a little fiery sometimes. I'm here to tell you today. We're going to church. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we are in church. Come on. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Sister C. Um, but we can look all through, all through, through the, the Old Testament. So the next one, let's throw it up. I love the Word of God, and so he said it best, so I'm just going to repeat. So we are, after all, your people and the sheep of your very own pasture. We will give you thanks forever. We will proclaim your praises from one generation to the next. And I love the heart of legacy, the point of the generation after generation after generation following after the Lord and the things that we're instilling in our kids and passing on to them. The next one, let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. So all through the Old Testament, all through the New Testament, praise the Lord your God, praise the Lord your God. It's a way that we worship, a way that we give thanks. And how, how, how could we not praise? How could we not just hit our knees every day and we think about all the good things that the Lord has done for us? You know, enough, enough that he sent his son to die. That living, once being dead, being raised to life. And, and then on top of that, all the other things. So it's like, you know, you go around like the table at Thanksgiving, you're like, thank you for my family and thank you for food. And, um, and it's true, and we just have to keep that because it's just a constant thing of praise back to the Lord for all he has done to remember and give praise where praise is due. So number two of why we show gratitude is it's a command. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So this is Paul saying, give thanks in all circumstances. Not necessarily for all circumstances. There are things that you're like, God, I thank you that my dog died. You don't have to thank him for that. But you can be thankful that in the midst of that heartache, like, he is still good. So give thanks in all circumstances. Find that hope. That little video that played before worship, I was like, I hope they don't take all my points. I haven't seen it, but it was good. I'm like, I could, I didn't have to get up here. I could have just sat down and just do the work. Um, but yeah, so it's a command. So the next verse, don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life. And that's in the Passion Translation, and I just love the way that it says that, with overflowing gratitude. Thank you. Yes, amen. We love it. And so because it's a command, because it is said in the language and, like, people smarter than me who know, like, the, the Greek and the subject verb, all of that, the, the language of this is a command. You know, same with rejoice always. I tell you again, rejoice. The way that it is written is a command the same as do not murder. And because it's a command, we know that it's possible. Because the Lord never asks us to do things that we're not going to be able to do in his strength. And so you can do it. There's a story that I really love. Um, have you guys ever heard of Corey Ten Boom? Yeah. Maybe you've heard this before, but I'm going to tell this story again anyway. So the Ten Boom family were in Amsterdam um, during the Nazi occupation. And their family actually had a secret room where they hid... Um, tons of Jews as they were coming and going and, and all of this stuff. And it was really, really successful. 
But on February 28, 1944, a traitor led the German police to the hiding place, and 30 people, including several members of the Ten Boom family, were arrested. Um, so Betsy and Corey, or the two daughters, and their father were taken to Chevin, Chevin and that was something prison, um, where Corey's dad actually died 10 days later. So the girls were there for 10 months, and then they were sent to Ravensbrück concentration camp near Berlin, which was the largest camp for women in German controlled regions. Thousands of women were executed there, and the conditions were abhorrent. Like, you can't even begin to imagine and describe. And so Betsy and Corey actually their faith never wavered in all of this. It, the phenomenal book, The Hiding Place by Corey Ten Boom, if you haven't read it, I can't recommend it enough. It's so good. You want to get your heart right on attitude or gratitude and forgiveness, you will be incredibly challenged. But they had led secret prayer services in their barracks using a smuggled Bible. And so when Corey and Betsy entered, I mean, we're talking fleas and lice and all of this stuff, they were starving emaciated, they had lost their father, they lost their home, everything. And they cried out to the Lord to help them. And while laying on a bunk bed with several other, other women, Betsy turned to Corey and shared these words. Give thanks in all circumstances. Corey asked, what on earth can we be thankful for? And Betsy said, we are together in prison and we have a Bible that wasn't confiscated. And then Betsy prayed, and thank you, Lord, for the fleas. <laughs> Corey told her sister that she could never give thanks for fleas. She's like, I'm not doing that. You're crazy. I'll do a lot of things. I'm not doing that, Betsy. <laughs> but Betsy reminded her that it is God's will to give thanks in all circumstances. And so while they're lying on their flea and lice-infested beds, they gave thanks for the fleas. After several weeks passed, they noticed that the soldiers rarely came to their barracks. And initially, Betsy and Corey didn't know why, but they didn't question it, because they continued to do their Bible studies and share the word of God and encouragement undisturbed without being found out. And one day, actually, Betsy asked a supervisor to come to the barracks for assistance. And Betsy comes back and she tells Corey, like, Corey, they wouldn't come. They will not come. The guards don't want to come through this door, and she says, you know why? And so Betsy's, you can imagine she's probably like really excited at this point. She says, because of the fleas. <laughs> That's what the supervisor said. The place is crawling with fleas. And so in the moment, the thing that was causing them such discomfort and angst, the Lord used it. And Corey was like, well, thank you, God, for the fleas. So number three, yeah, there's a picture. Number three, it shifts attitudes and makes impossible situations possible and bearable, right? So I pray to God that we're never in a situation quite as extreme as Corey and Betsy, but if we were to be, I hope that what would come out of my mouth is gratitude and praise to the Lord. Um, the Israelites, you know, like I mentioned them earlier, they were notorious for complaining as they wandered. You can, you can read, and you're like, what? Get it together, people. Like, all the things the Lord has done. Um, but how quickly they forgot as they wandered. And so they were like, I, you know what? I'd rather go back to Egypt, God, because at least there I knew where my food was coming from. Even though I was a slave, I had meals. I had enough to eat. I was comfortable in that and whatever. Like, th this literally came out of their mouth. You can read it in Exodus 16. But they're like, I'm, I'd rather go back to Egypt. I'd rather face slavery than to be this. After all that they had seen, all of the plagues, the miracles, the crossing of the Red Sea, all of this, they're just like, we're done. And so God sends some quail and manna and takes care of them yet again, because who's grateful for God's long-suffering patience? Amen. I know I am. So they forgot, and they still grumbled, and they went on to sin against the Lord over and over and over again. Every time they forgot, they would go back to their old ways. And so my encouragement to you is to have that gratitude. When we forget, we return to those old ways and fall back into sin, right? So youth, like I was talking about last night, like you fall back into that pit. 
but to keep walking. And gratitude is a great way to remember all that the Lord has done. Something that our family does, um, you remember when the Israelites crossed the Jordan River and the Lord told them to put up 12 stones of remembrance as an altar. And so when the generations would come, you could say, this is what the Lord has done. And so being in Colorado, we have a lot of great river rocks everywhere. And so we have these 12 stones on our table. And we don't do it every meal, but often we'll sit around and we'll just say something that we're grateful for to the Lord about that day or that week or something happening. And we'll stack a little altar in the middle of our dining room table, just constantly being reminded of what the Lord has done. So that's for free. You can use that too. All it costs you is to go around and pick up some rocks. Um, but a verse to, to make this point is James 3.11. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. It's impossible to have gra show gratitude and complain at the same time. You can't do it. It cannot come out of your mouth at the same time. I think of a time, this is really fun being the preacher, and you know, I'll, like they always talk about their family, so I'm coming at you. <laughs> a few summers ago, um, our family was in northern Iraq uh, around this time of year, and it's unbelievably hot like you I mean Georgia is hot don't get me wrong and the humidity it's oppressive Iraq was a whole nother level and we spent our time working in refugee camps and going around with concrete slabs and what were supposed to be temporary shelters um, given by who gave it to the the UN yeah so they gave it to them just supposed to be like hey this is a temporary thing while you guys get settled and relocated it's been over 10 years that they have been living in these conditions. And um, it's actually really great as a parent because then when your kid is complaining about something here, first world problem, you're like, hey, do you remember those refugees? Like, it's, <laughs> it's a quick way to humble them and me. But, um, but we were there as a family and it's super, super hot. And every day, I mean, and God love them. Like, they're melting and it, it was real. The, the heat was real. And uh, they're like, I'm hot. I'm hot. Mom, how long do we have to be here? I'm so hot. And so I told him, I was like, okay, listen, we're going to say it one time. Because it is hot and it's real, and we want to acknowledge that. So we're going to say one time, it's hot. But then we're going to look, and what can we be grateful for? What can we give thanks for? When we first um, joined YWAM, it's an old Hilton hotel that has been turned into a, a training campus. We had one hotel room for Eric and I and our two-year-old, Savannah, at the time. So one room, and I knew it was going to be small and uncomfortable. Like, we'd put her down for a nap, and we'd have to sit in the hallway while she fell asleep, and minor inconveniences and all this. But I actually had on my door statistics of people who don't have running water, people who don't have electricity, enough food to eat, just all putting it into perspective to know, okay, this situation is hard, but it is possible because we have the grace of the Lord. So, and just, yeah, to remember, no matter what, the Lord goes before you, and he is with you. And even in grief and uncertainty, and you, don't get me, like, there are things that are impossible. I mean, we look at Corey Ten Boom and her family, and we look at real things like cancer diagnoses, the loss of a loved one the dissolve of a marriage, like all of these things that are real and hard and hurtful. And it's not that we have to give thanks for those hard things, but to give thanks in those things that despite the worst day we could ever have, like that, that thing that said, it's like remembering, man, you have it all because of the sacrifice that Jesus made for you. Your worst day will not be your last day that we have the hope of eternity and salvation to look forward to. So finally, the last point is that it keeps our eyes focused on eternity. I've kind of gone there already just thinking in Colossians 3, 1 and 2. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated and at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. 
And so when we set our eyes on things above, the momentary troubles of this life pass away. It's a hope that anchors our soul and sets us apart and keeps us trusting in the Lord. Amen? So as we go into the time of communion, where we reflect on what the Lord has done for us in sending his son to take our place, to allow us to put off that old self, to be forgiven of our sins and enter into eternal, abundant life. My encouragement to you is just check in with the Lord. Give him thanks in a new way. Ask him, the Holy Spirit, to open your eyes in a way that haven't been before. The gravity of that sacrifice, the immense love and blessings and the richness that God has for each of you, the plan that he has for you, for a hope and a future, the goodness, the love, the love, the love. I think if we could even have a glimpse or a moment of, man, God, how much do you love me? We would be floored. In Zephaniah, it says that the Lord sings over us, right? I love that verse to think that the Lord is just singing over us. And the actual translation is not just, I love you. That'd be beautiful too. But it actually says the intensity with which he yells. He yells over you. He sings over you. The thoughts that he has towards you outnumber the grains of sand on the seashore. The creator of the universe, the God who made it all, who made you perfectly, who formed you in your mother's womb, sings to the point of hoarseness because he is so wild about you. He is so passionate for you. And youth, I know this isn't part of our youth session, but you're here and you're going to get it. Do not waste your life. The things that the Lord has for you, you have no idea. And if you could just get hold of the fact that you belong, that you have a place, that God loves you radically. And that will change your life, change your friends' lives, and ultimately change the world. If you guys didn't know it, this generation, this is going to be the generation that sees revival come to this earth like it never has before. I'm walking. I have the cue walk here. Anyways, but I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping it up here. And uh, just to be encouraged, yeah, as we go into that communion time, just to reflect, to remember, to give thanks to the Lord for all he has done, all he will continue to do. And please accept our sincere gratitude um, as missionaries sent from this place for, for the things that you do to support our family and the work that we're doing. So, amen. Bless you. Can I, can I pray for you guys really quick? God, I thank you for this morning, and I thank you for the opportunity to uh, come and share and bring hopefully a word of encouragement and, and truth to always be grateful, to remember the sacrifice, to remember the love that you have for us. And God, as I brought my loaves and fishes, we pray, Lord, that you would take that and you multiply it. Would you stir the hearts? Holy Spirit, would you come and touch hearts and lives and bless this body that I know um, brings you so much joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Here at Legacy, we um, practice an open table. So if you are a follower of Christ, we invite you to take communion this morning and be reminded of the sacrifice that he made for us. When we have finished our prayer, you will exit to the left of your rows and go to the station in front of your section. You may use this altar. You may take it back to your seat. And then um, when the, the singing begins, just feel free to take your communion. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I bow my head before you in humility and ask you to examine my heart. Show me anything that is not pleasing to you. Reveal any secret pride, unconfessed sin, rebellion, or unforgiveness that may be hindering my relationship with you. I know that I'm your beloved child, having received you into my heart and life because of the price you paid to cover my sin. As I take the bread representing your body that was broken for me, I remember and celebrate your faithfulness to me and to all who receive you. 
I can't begin to fathom the agonizing suffering of your crucifixion, yet you took that pain and died for me. Thank you for your extravagant love and unmerited favor. Thank you that your death gave me abundant life now and eternal life forever. As you instructed your disciples, I too receive this bread in remembrance of you. In the same way, as I take this cup representing your blood poured out from a splintered cross, I realize that you were the supreme sacrifice for all my sin, past, present, and future. Because of your blood shed for me and your body broken for me, I can be free from the power of penalty and of all sin. Thank you, Lord, for your victory over death, the death, punishment, and pain that I deserved. I take this time to recommit my life, heart, thoughts, and my everything to you. Fill me with your powerful spirit and help me to keep this remembrance of you close to my heart. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may exit to the left. You know, 
I can really resonate with um, what a lot of people are feeling right now. And when we are not grateful, we are the ones that miss out. This past Wednesday, I had an incredible experience. I got to see the bioluminescence in the water. So um, let me break it down for you what that means. You stick your paddle in the water and it glows. It was amazing. But I had a lot of opportunities to not be grateful for that amazing experience and how God just brings light in the darkness. I could have missed the whole thing. I'm very, my skin, my body is very sensitive. I'm a weirdo. If you don't know me very well, uh, there's a lot of things I can't eat. And um, when bugs bite me, my face was swelling up like Hitch on that movie where he had the allergic reaction. I had like a mosquito bite here and it was like this big, no lie. I should have taken a picture, but it was completely hideous. And I had one here and it was like sticking off my head this far. And I can literally feel my heart beating in my face and everywhere these mosquitoes are biting me. So the place is called Mosquito Bay. <laughs> yeah, and I had on clothes, but they were biting me through the clothes. They were biting me everywhere. And I mean, I'm telling you, I look hideous. So I could have just gotten in my car and left. Yeah, that would have probably felt a lot better. I'm still feeling, uh, still feeling the results. But I didn't. I chose to look for the good. I chose to be grateful. And man, I'm so glad I did. Literally, you're in the dark. You're in a kayak with a clear bottom. And you're paddling along. And underneath you looks like the galaxy. There are so many little sparkles everywhere. It's like you're looking at the Milky Way and it's the water. It was phenomenal. And had I chosen my own comfort, if I had chosen to be in a situation where I could feel a little bit more grateful, I would have really missed out. And that really reminds me that life is the same way. And if we avoid situations that are uncomfortable, if we avoid people and places that make us itch, <laughs> we're going to miss out. God's going to do his work regardless, but it might not be through us. So I encourage you today, have a heart of gratitude. Go where he's leading you, no matter where it is, what it is. He will provide, and you will be blessed in his plan. Let's worship together again. Stand up, join us, worship. This is who God says we are. Believe it.
about everything that we've heard today, I want to speak a blessing over each of you. I pray that God truly shows up in your life today and this week in such a way that you have a heart overspilling with gratitude for him. Thank you guys for worshiping with us today. It's been so much fun, and youth have an awesome time tonight, and we'll see everybody else next Sunday. Have a great week. You're dismissed.